good morning, uh, maybe afternoon or evening, but welcome uh, as we have another uh, time of study together and another time of reflection and learning from uh, the Word of God and, and the Gospel of Mark. And uh, perhaps you, if you've been following along, you'll you'll remember that we are uh, in in the phase or the stage of Jesus's life right toward the end. Uh, it, this would be the Thursday of Holy Week. Jesus has uh, been arrested uh, in the garden. Um, and we've gone through what might be viewed as a preliminary hearing uh, before the high priest Caiaphas and the Sanhedrin. And uh, they've been working uh, very uh, fastidiously, there's a fun word, fastidiously to uh, kind of come up with charges, but they can't find agreement. Well, finally, uh, Caiaphas himself asks Jesus, um, are you the Christ, uh, the son uh, of the blessed? And he says, uh, I am. And and this really does it for him. This this uh, puts him over the edge that Jesus would uh, dare to equate himself with God. Uh, what they don't realize is he's telling the truth. Uh, well, let's pray and we'll get into uh, what unfolds next in uh, these events uh, this late, late Thursday night, early Friday morning of Holy Week. Let's pray. Lord, uh, we, we turn our hearts and our minds to you. We ask that you would clear away distractions and concerns and things that, that really consume us and uh, overwhelm us with care. And Lord, enable us to pause uh, briefly where uh, the, the, the things of the world kind of uh, are pushed away and and we can really savor being with you in your presence. Uh, we can savor the, the, the beauty and the truth of your word. And, and even by the spirit that we might savor uh, the, the privilege it is to, to have you speak to our minds and hearts. And shape our lives to be more like Jesus. So would you do that all we ask in Jesus name. Amen. All right. So Mark 14 and we're picking up in verse 63. After uh, backing up, I guess, verse 61, uh, Jesus is remaining silent. Again, the high priest asked him, are you the Christ, the son of the blessed? And Jesus said, I am, and you will see the son of man seated at the right hand of power coming with clouds in the heaven. So at, at verse 63, and the high priest tore his garments and said, what further witnesses do we need? You have heard his blasphemy what is your decision and they all condemned him as deserving death and some began to spit on him and to cover his face and to strike him saying prophesy and the guards re uh, the guards received him with blows so the the high priest I mean this is it Jesus is equating himself with God he, he accuses him of blasphemy, which is, is the worst crime possible because what it is is it's someone who is, is uh, claiming to either speak for God wrongly, which would be false prophecy, so misrepresenting God, worse yet is to claim to be God. This is the worst possible thing. And so uh, before he even says, what more further witnesses do we need? He, he tears his garments, which is an act of abject disgust, protest, uh, condemnation. I mean, this is, this is uh, just a, a, a reaction that is saying what you have just said, Jesus, is absolutely deplorable and despicable. And how could you possibly do this? This is an act of outrage, tearing his clothes and then facetiously says, what further witnesses do we need? You have heard his blasphemy. We, in other words, he's saying, we don't need any witnesses. This crazy guy has cornered and trapped himself. He's, he's imprisoned himself with his outright lies. And so he's blasphemous. And so he says to the Sanhedrin, what is your decision? And it says, they all condemned him as deserving death they condemned him for telling the truth here we have uh, represented representing all of humanity 
all those that are separated from God because of sin and rebellion and wickedness are pronouncing judgment on God. There, there might not be something as, as ludicrous and outrageous and audacious as the created pronouncing judgment on the creator. And that is precisely what's going on here. But what they don't realize is in the sovereignty of God, their act, their decision, their pronouncement is actually fulfilling the plan of God. That is how sovereign and glorious and great and free and powerful God is. That even the, the acts against God work in favor of the plan of God. He's deserving of death. And so verse 65 begins the physical brutality and enacted judgment on Jesus. They spit on him, which is which is a, a, a vilification of Jesus. It's it's a it's a, a way of of saying you are so despised and despicable that we treat you as less than human. You are sub human you are so bad they spit on him and and then they cover his face and they're they're hitting him and they they're mocking him by saying prophesy in other words tell me which who who hit you was it was it mike was it sally was it chris was it jane who who hit you as as they're pounding him and then it says the guards received him with many blows in other words jesus is now handed off to the official uh guards the the soldiers and and as they receive him, they received him roughly uh, uh, in, a, in a very physical and brutal way. They've received him. And so uh, they, they've solidified the charges against Jesus. They've pronounced the sentence, and it's a unanimous decision. And it's interesting that it's unanimous because not only does all of humanity stand unanimously under the judgment of God, the just judgment of God, the righteous judgment of God for our sin. All of humanity unanimously judged guilty. And isn't it, isn't it interesting that humanity would stand unanimously against God and Jesus Christ and pronounce God guilty. So there's the sentence pronounced and then the suffering begins as they spit on him, they strike him, they mock him, and they beat him. And such begins the horrendous pain, heartache, hardship, suffering, abandonment, torture, brutality, and physical destruction that Jesus will undergo, who is innocent, but he does it for us. He undergoes all of this for you and for me to ponder the greatness of God to ponder the love of God, to ponder the mercy and grace of God that Jesus Christ would undergo this suffering to save us. Let's pray. Oh, Jesus, we are just at the beginning in, in the Gospel of Mark, reading and reflecting upon the brutality of your suffering that you truly were the Lamb of God sent before your executioners. And you were innocent. You are innocent, but you suffered our condemnation to win our freedom. Lord, let us hear that. Let this sink into our minds and our hearts that your suffering was endured for our freedom. And that you only ask us to surrender and lay down our life in faith and trust in you. God, move in our hearts to believe on you and believe in you this way for all that you have done for us and for our salvation. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
oh, uh, it's it's going to get harder to reflect upon the the chastisement and punishment that Jesus endured for us. But such is the extent of his love for you. Perhaps you've heard people say the word, I love you. Maybe you've uh, even experienced some acts that were intended to be expressions of love. But you and I will never know what love truly is until we experience and meet love personified in Jesus. Turn to him. I'll see you again tomorrow.